So for a long time, I've wondered what makes a space heater effective and cost saving and I couldn't find any good data online. So finally, I just decided to run some tests myself and that's what I'm going to be showing you today. So I'm all about saving money and doing things the most effective and efficient way I possibly can. This past year, I've got my fourth space heater and I decided to start collecting data. So this video has been a long time in the making. I've been collecting data for months and I finally have the results. And honestly, the results are not quite what I was expecting. If you only want to see the results, go ahead and skip to the end of the video. If you want to see the process of how I came up with the results, just keep on watching. Also at the end of the video, I'm going to talk a little bit about what space heater I think might be the best for you and why. Okay, so the process of what I did, let me tell you a little bit about the setup. What I did is I got four points in the room that I would take a temperature reading from so I could get the average temperature. My room's a pretty small room. It's about 110 square feet or 860 cubic feet. I took a reading of the temperature every 15 minutes for an hour so I could get up to four average temperatures per hour and measure how many degrees each 15 minutes each space heater had. So the goal of my experiment was simply just to see which one heats up the room the best and costs the least amount to do it. I used four different styles of space heaters. I used an oil-filled radiator. I used an infrared quartz space heater. I used a mica panel space heater and I used a ceramic space heater. These are actually about the most common styles or types of space heaters I've seen. If you want to see the exact space heaters I use, I will post some links below. You can go check those out. So in my experiment, I placed the space heater in the middle of the floor. I measured the temperature. I tested on the high heat and the low heat just to compare the differences between the two. And I also used a smart socket so I could measure the wattage and the overall power consumption for the time it was on. I did this experiment over the course of a few months just so I could try to make sure I get consistent data with the outside temperature and the inside temperature. I realized this experiment's maybe not the most scientific or accurate, but for me it was good enough to make some conclusions based off the results I got. So before I get to the results, I want to talk a little bit about the pros and cons of each style of space heater. So here are some of the things I like about the oil-filled space heater. So for one, it has an analog button so you can turn it on or off with a smart switch. It has a long cool down period so it can still heat the room even after you've turned it off. It has no moving parts so it's very quiet and it doesn't get very hot so it is actually quite safe to the touch. Some of the things I don't like about the oil filled space heater, it's really quite heavy. Uh, if this is tipped and especially tipped onto a child, uh, this could be quite dangerous. And because of how heavy it is, it's not really super mobile. It also takes a while to heat up. So if you want instant heat, you're not going to get it with an oil filled space heater. I also find it to be quite large. And another con with it is that because it only has an analog temperature dial, you kind of have to guess with setting the thermostat. Okay, the infrared quartz space heater. Some of the things I like with this is it gets hot probably about 15 seconds after you turn it on. So it's a pretty instant heat. This space heater has a fan, so the heat radiates pretty well around the whole room. Another nice thing about this space heater is uh, most of the space heaters I've seen like this, they're actually designed to look like furniture or to look nice. The model I have kind of looks like a fireplace and that can be a nice thing, especially if you just keep it in one spot and use it like a furniture piece. Another nice thing about this is it can be controlled with a remote control so you can be sitting at your desk or something and control it that way. Some of the things I don't like about this space heater, for one, because it has a fan, it can be a bit loud. This space heater has sound. While it is kind of nice that you can use a remote control to control the buttons, that also means because it has digital controls, you can't use a smart socket. If you turn it off with a smart socket, you can't turn it back on with the smart socket. 
Another thing about the space heater is the area that the heat comes out is kind of concentrated so that metal grate can get really hot and could burn you if you touch it. So next we'll talk about the mica panel heater. Some of the things I like about this space heater is for one, it's really lightweight, especially for the size. It's very light, very easy to pick up and very easy to move. You get instant heat with this as soon as you turn it on, you can feel the heat and it radiates really well throughout the whole room. Out of all the space heaters I tested, this one got the most hot and it really radiates that heat very well. This space heater also has analog switches, which means you can turn it on and off using a smart switch, which I really like. So some of the cons with this, uh, the top gets very hot and could probably burn you if you touch it. Another thing that's not great with this is it looks pretty boring. Uh, it is fairly large. Uh, it doesn't look like furniture. It's very obviously a space heater. And again, with the analog thermostat, you kind of just have to guess what temperature you're at and play with that. You don't have any digital reading to know for sure. Lastly, I will talk about the ceramic heater. One of the nice things about ceramic heaters is that they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. The one I have is very, very small. It's very portable, very easy to move. The space heater also has a fan. I think most ceramic space heaters I've seen have fans which is nice for directing the heat where you want it to go. And ceramic heaters also seem to spread the heat out pretty well, so if you touch any part of it, it doesn't get super hot. Some of the cons for ceramic space heaters, for one, again, you have a fan, so it's going to be a bit noisy. And also this has a digital on off button, so you can't use it with a smart socket and turn it on and off with a smart socket if that's what you want to do. Okay, now on to the results. Here are some of the things I found while testing all of these space heaters. So you can see here on my spreadsheet that the mica panel space heater and the infrared quartz space heater made by far the largest difference in the first 15 minutes of it being on. There's the largest temperature change out of all the space heaters. Both of these space heaters cost about 11 cents per hour to run on full heat. This also happens to be the highest out of all the space heaters. So I found that with about all of the space heaters within the first hour, each one of them cost about one cent to raise the room temperature by one degree. And just a note of information, I did some calculations and it seems that if you want to use a space heater for about four hours a day for about four months of the year, it's going to cost you roughly 50 to $60 that year to use a space heater. So really space heaters aren't super cheap, especially if you're doing multiple rooms or have it on for more than four hours a day. So here are some of the conclusions I came to after running my experiment. After running all the tests, I found that space heaters more or less are basically the same. They create electrical resistance and they heat up. The only major difference is shape and sizes and how it disperses the heat. That being said, I do think there are some things with space heaters that can contribute to the efficiency of a space heater. If your goal is the same as mine, which is to save as much money as possible while heating a room, then the way to go is you really want to heat up the room as fast as possible. So basically you just want a space heater that is as big and hot as you can possibly get it and heat up the room as fast as you possibly can. Once a room is heated, especially if you have a good insulated home, it will take quite a while to cool back down to the original temperature. And to illustrate why I think it's so important to heat up a room as quick as possible, let me show you on my spreadsheet a scenario that I put together. So you can see here with the mica heater, even though that the price per hour is 11 cents and that's quite hot, in the first 15 minutes, it changed the temperature by basically seven degrees. If you compare that with the uh, ceramic heater on half power, it's much cheaper to run per hour at only four cents, but in the first 15 minutes, it only heated the room by almost two degrees. If you look at this for the entire hour, the mica heater 
made as much difference in 15 minutes as the ceramic heater made in an hour. So if you look at that from a cost perspective, it costs three cents to heat up the room seven degrees in only 15 minutes, whereas it costs the ceramic heater four cents to heat up the room 6.6 .6 degrees in one hour. So if you were to use the mica heater, turn it on for just 15 minutes, then you would have a room that is warmer than using the ceramic heater for the same amount of time, but it costs less money. And that's why I suggest getting a bigger space heater, turning it on to full heat and just trying to heat up the room as fast as you can. Then you can turn off the heat and let it slowly cool again. So when you decide on a space heater, you really need to kind of figure out what features are important for you and what your overall goal is and also the scenario in which you will be using a space heater. So to finish up this video, I want to talk to you about what scenarios each space heater might be really good for. So the oil filled space heater, I think this space heater I would recommend for an enclosed room where you have an area where you could just set the space heater and just leave it there. This is also a good space heater if you want to keep it on throughout the duration of the day and use the thermostat so it goes on and off by itself. This is nice because it takes a while to heat up and slow down so you'd have a good average temperature throughout the day. The infrared quartz space heater was one of the more efficient and effective space heaters I found. And I think this is a really good space heater for larger rooms or rooms that you don't expect to fully warm up, like maybe even a garage. This is nice because it has a fan so you can blow it on you. And so even if you're not heating up the whole room, you can still feel the heat because it's blowing on you. You need to keep in mind that it does have a lot of sound, so I wouldn't really recommend it for small rooms where you need to be quiet. The mica panel heater ended up being my favorite heater for a few reasons. I just liked how portable and lightweight it was. It was also the hottest heater and it did a really great job of heating up the room very fast. I would recommend this heater in an enclosed room where you want a quiet environment. I think this is a good heater for just about any bedroom or a smaller room. It also worked really well for us in our downstairs where we have our kitchen and living room connected. So it can also work well for large rooms. And lastly, the ceramic heater, I would recommend using this in an area where you need kind of personalized heat. I've seen a lot of people will use this at work, like under their desk. And I think that's a really good use case for this because it can blow the heat on you so you get the heat you need. But depending on the size, it might not really heat up an entire room that well, especially if it's open space. Lastly, I want to share a few tips about saving a bit of money based off the data I found. So one thing I found is after about the first 15 or 30 minutes of having a space heater on in this room, the difference that it made after that point was pretty marginal. It didn't really heat up the room that much. So I'd recommend only heating up the space heater for about 15 to 30 minutes at a time and then turning it off. Another thing, as I mentioned before, try to heat up the room as fast as you can. So crank the heat up as much as possible. Overall, it takes longer for the room to cool down. So if you can heat it up quickly, then you will save more money than gradually letting the room warm up and then cooling down. So just heat up the room fast. Another thing I found is the warmer a room is, the less difference a space heater is going to make. So really, a space heater is much more effective in really cool temperatures. I would suggest using a space heater to get it from really uncomfortable to maybe slightly uncomfortable and consider wearing a jacket or wearing a blanket and that's really what's going to save you money. <clears throat> the other tip I would share is try to contain the heat exactly where you want it. If you use one room in the house more than others, make sure that that's where you put the heat. I wouldn't suggest opening doors and just trying to heat up the whole house. That's just going to cost a ton of money. And my last tip is if you can, get a thermostat and measure the room and use it with your space heater a lot and find the point where your space heater no longer becomes effective. For me, I found that anything beyond about 65 degrees started being less and less effective. So try to find that point with your space heater so you're not wasting money just trying to get that extra one or two degrees. So I know this was a really long video. If you watched the whole thing, congratulations. I would give you a sticker if 
I knew who you were, but I don't. But I hope this video was somewhat helpful. If it was, please consider liking and subscribing, and maybe in the future I can make more videos like this. If you have any ideas for me about another cool video to make, feel free to write a comment below and uh, maybe I'll make it. Who knows? I don't. Because I can't. I don't know the future. But, you know, whatever.